Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm fitting a new fuel pump to the FGX. Now what I'm fitting is a Walbro 460 fuel pump. What is actually in the car is a Walbro 535 fuel pump from memory I think. Now the reason I'm doing this is because the 353 hasn't got a check valve in it. So I'll go through what that check valve actually does and why I'm changing it because it's starting to get annoying. So basically with the fuel pump that's in the car right now, the no check valve means that the fuel when I turn off the car will run back to the tank where with the normal fuel pump there's a check valve in there and it allows the fuel to stay up at the rail pressurized. So what me that means is when I go to start the car, which I'll show you right now, that's the fuel pump going, so it should be pressurized. As you can see, it takes a long time to start. So that does get annoying, and it does get a lot worse when the car is hot. I've been cranking the car for at least 15 seconds once, trying to get it started. So after that, I thought, you know what, let's chuck in the new fuel pump. Uh, I've also had a few little issues with it cutting out under high load and that, so I'm going to do some other stuff about that. But I'm also thinking it might be because the fuel pump is sucking too much fuel out of the bowl that it sits in. So we'll chuck a smaller pump in. This car is not making that much power, it needs such a big fuel pump. It was just the only one I was available to get at the time, so yeah, is what it is. So now I've got the right size one, we're going to rip out the back seat, take the top of the tank off uh, and get into it. Uh, as you saw, the fuel tank is empty, so I have been driving it around trying to get it out. Um, otherwise, you can just drain the tank by bypassing the fuel pump relays or just putting power straight to the fuel pump and putting it into a jerry can. I don't have a jerry can that's empty here at the moment. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the seat out, we're going to take the top of the tank out, and then go through all that. So this is our Walbro 460 kit that I got from Golby's. No sponsorship there, but Golby's, feel free to share and hit me up. So, you can buy two variations of this kit. Actually, I think there might be a few different variations. You can get a high performance one. You can get this one. You can get one that is just a fuel pump by itself. Uh, this kit was about 200 something bucks. It comes with all of the fitting stuff we need. I mainly got this because I wanted another one of these hoses because when I first ordered it, I didn't actually order the right one. It didn't come with a, with a fuel pump connector. So once the tank's apart, we can go through all that. Once this is all fitted, it should bolt straight in because all this is pretty much already in the tank from when I first did it. Um, but yeah, what you'll also need is a bucket to put the bowl in so we can strip it apart and change the pump. Um, and that's about it, so let's crack on into it. Right, to get this tank, this, get the top of the car seat off, it's quite simple. Just push into the back and left forward. It's a bit hard to do when I'm trying to be in the camera still. Go. So that's pretty straightforward. This will pull out and then right down there, once I get to it, I'll cut to that. And right down here, it's the top of our fuel tank. Quite easy to do. We'll just take this off. I think it unscrews or we might just pry it open. It's been a while. And then we can get this out and get the next step. Okay, so as you can see from the top of our fuel tank here, we have an inlet and an outlet. Uh, that's inlet to the engine. And that's outlet to the engine going back to the tank also got all our wires here so there'll be fuel pump wiring and also the tank sender in here uh, make sure that your tank is empty because if you don't it's going to put fuel everywhere it's going to be an absolute nightmare to get it all out plus your car's going to stink for a long time so the ring here you can get a fuel tank unlocking tool which is a bit nicer than what i'm going to do i'm just going to use a chisel and hammer to knock the ring around so it can come up Move that ring to the side, undo these, unplug this, and then this whole section should pop out nicely into our bucket, and we'll go from there. Alrighty, so I got a torch, got some gloves on because I don't really feel like getting petrol on me. I uh, got some tools, just a hammer, a chisel, needle nose pliers, that'll easily get those undone. I've zip tied just to mark which one goes where. That was from when I've previously done the job, so I've just kept them on there. Um, and I've got our bucket here ready to go. So I'll quickly knock this around and hopefully when I take the top off, fuel does not go everywhere like it did last time. All right, so I use a seal pick to get in behind here and flick forward these little tabs. That's the easy way to do it if you haven't got the right tool, which I don't have the right tool on me. Once you get those undone, this will pull back. Eventually, there we go. Bit of fuel come out, make sure you've got a rag. Um, but not too much 
and then we're good to go. We'll do that to this side, undo our plug, and then we'll undo the ring. All right, so I used my punch and flogged it like a red-headed stepchild, and then uh, it's sorted, it comes out. So this ring will come up. Under there we have, there'll be an O-ring where our fuel pump sits. So we'll get this all out. It's gonna be a bit of a pain in the ass because there's so much shit in the way, but it is what it is. Uh, from memory, this ring won't actually fit out of this hole. Well, it might, but we'll just push it to the side out of the way. The fuel tank sits all in this area here, so we're not gonna lose it. And if we do, we can reach up and fix it later. So we'll move that out of the way, get it done. I'm trying to be a little bit more safe this time. Last time I got fuel all over my hands and I broke my GoPro, which is what you guys are watching on. So uh, yeah, I'll try and not touch the GoPro as much as I can. So you also have your wiring for your, your fuel level. Make sure you undo that before you take this out too much more because you might rip the wiring off. So just a little red and black, red there, yeah, little yellow and black wire that's just falling back into the fuel tank. That's wonderful. Here is our, what I'd call a fuel pod, I guess. It does have a fair bit of fuel in there, so we'll put it in the bucket and we'll clear that out once we get out of the car. Um, just reach in here, get this out. I don't know if you can see it from up there, but that's our wiring for that. Pretty self-explanatory on that one. So we'll leave that up here so it doesn't fall back in because I sort of don't want to go fishing in the fuel tank again. Um, we'll just check to make sure this is all free down here because I did have some issues with this before. It was saying that it wasn't reading full, so. It seems to be all right. Um, make sure you cover this back up again because you don't want shit falling back into the tank. Um, because yeah, that's bad. You do have an inline fuel filter in the system anyway, but you still don't want shit falling back into the tank when it can be avoided. So we'll take this bucket out of the car because it's getting real fumy in here and we'll strip it all apart on the floor outside. So I've pulled apart the fuel cell as you can see. We've also had a bit of issue with this hose, it's busted so that might be part of the problem. This was pretty easy to take apart, you just got your four, your three points up here, sorry. You just put a screwdriver into each of those and this should pop off. Uh, once you obviously undo your return line, so I'll have to cut that and fix that up before I put it back together. Now inside here, you can see the rest of it. This is the bottom of the carrier where my old fuel pump is. I did have to modify it to fit the uh, other fuel pump in, the 535, so hopefully I haven't damaged it too much, but it should fit right in nicely. So we'll go take that out now, and then we should be sweet. Okay, so the fuel pump is out. Now, the major issue, as you can see, the return line's busted. I'd say that was probably from running too much uh, fuel through it and not having the right pressure setting done. I know with the bigger fuel pumps you need to change the hole at the bottom so yeah I probably did something wrong with there. I'll take blame for that. Now what I was going to say is the reason why you want to get this full kit is because these actually get stuck on the factory uh, fittings so you need to cut them off. So make sure when you get if you're not putting it into a you know like a something like a surge tank or something make sure you get the proper kit. So we'll quickly undo this put all these on do it back up, chuck it back in there. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so here we have our two fuel pumps side by side. You wouldn't really notice much of a difference between them because they're both fairly meaty. As you can see, the 535 says no check valve on it, so I'm not just talking shit. And then this is our 4, 460. So it also came with a new sock, which is what we want because this one's collected a bit of shit in the bottom of the tank. So as you can see, I have put uh, hose clamps on here. That's just an extra bit of precaution. These really shouldn't come undone because it's all barbed, but I'd rather just put those on there. Costs nothing and just a bit of peace of mind. So next step will be feeding this back up through our modified hole that we've done here from the last one. Fit it back up into that slot, put a new hose clamp on it and rehook it in. Pretty straightforward. If you want me to go more in depth into this, I'm pretty sure on the FGX fuel system upgrade video, which I'll link at the end of this video. Um, I think I go into a bit more depth with that. I'm not too sure though. So just hang around and see what you think. Okay, so the kit I originally got didn't actually come with these plugs. So I'm gonna switch those over right now. So what I originally did was solder these together and then put heat shrink over it. Obviously heat shrink isn't fuel resistant. So these have come off over time. So it was still covered, but it looked pretty shit. So I'm just gonna replace it with these plugs. We need that connection made because this plug goes into our fuel pump and this side goes into the Falcon fuel sender itself. So we'll cut it here, shorten this wiring up, add these two new connectors, and then we'll be 100% fuel safe, fuel proof, which is pretty easy to do. And there we go, one complete connection. 
make sure you put the little boots that are in there. I don't know if you can see it from that angle, but there's little boots. They look similar to these. Make sure you put those on the wires before you crimp it all up. That way it makes a fairly sealed surface. All this here is sealed as well. So now we just have to plug it in, plug this up in here, and then we're good to go. So if your fuel pump's not sitting in there properly, you'll probably find because this hose here is locked straight. If you hold this and then give your fuel pump a twist, it'll actually put a loop in this wire, in this hose, sorry. It'll make it a lot easier to push, push that up into this capsule so you can get the bottom section onto it. Alrighty, back in the car now. Gonna drop our new fuel, well, fuel pump and complete assembly back into the tank. Make sure it obviously lines up with the exact same way you pulled it out, so if it's planetary. Don't forget to hook up your sender wire, which is in there as well. Um, and then we're gonna smack it back in, put that lock ring back in. I did manage to get that out. Uh, make sure this O-ring is seated properly because we don't need fuel pissing out everywhere. And we're gonna leave the seat off while we test to make sure that our uh, fuel system isn't leaking. So we'll quickly go smash that together and go to when it's done. Make sure they kind of come off. Plug in our plug. And now we're ready to start the car. So I'll start the car and hopefully we don't have a fireball happen in here. If you want to check your fuel pump, I've got this aftermarket gauge up here which came with my kit that I got off Golby's. Um, you can bypass your fuel pump, which is the relay. If you get your owner's manual here, it'll show you, this is this box right here. There's a, few, a relay right here. You can bypass the two end ones and that'll turn on your fuel pump. As you can see, I've got fuel pressure here. I was having a bit of a whoopsie poopsie because I wired them around the wrong way. So if you saw when I pulled it out, I had a jumper wire put in there. Um, I wired it to suit that, not the actual thing, so because I took that out, it didn't start up, so I had a bit of issues. It's a brush motor, they run in reverse if you wire it wrong. So we had to, we had to get Jaden here to fix that, I had a bit of a mind blank. But yes, now we've got fuel pressure, I will put this all together and now start the car, wake my baby up, which is sleeping uh, on <laughs> this afternoon. So we'll chuck back in the original relay, start it up, make sure it starts, and now you'll notice that when we start up the car, it'll start up pretty much straight away, it won't... Um, it won't wind over for 30 seconds or so before it starts up, so I'll just quickly give that a crack, make sure it starts at least. Beautiful. Starts up lovely. Anyway, now the baby's awake, I'll let you go. Thanks for watching, keep on boosting, and we'll see you in the next video.